We are now nearing the end of our 24 hours. Uh, it is 11 p.m., almost 11 p.m. here in India, 24 hours that brought together thousands of people from all around the world on this Independence Day. We've witnessed some truly delightful, yet, in, yet insightful and critical conversations, ranging from discussions around actions on global poverty, gender, energy, role of institutions, philanthropy, sustainability, inclusive growth, and stories from people doing tremendous work on the ground. And truly signifying that we are all in this together. We've had speakers and attendees join from every continent in the world. This has truly been the Nudge Forum Global Edition. Now, for the closing address, it is my honor and privilege to welcome the Consul General of India to Brazil, Mr. Amit Kumar Mishra, joining us all the way from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Mr. Arun Said, former chairman, British Telecom, chairman of uh, NASCOM Foundation and board member of the Nudge Foundation. Mrs. Uh, Mr. Seth is also a co-chair for uh, Sustainable Development Council and is on the board of Nana, Narayana Health, Sifi, among others. It is a pleasure to have you here with us. Request you to take over, Arun sir. Dear friends from all over the world, uh, greetings on our 74th Independence Day. I heard the PM very proudly today morning from the ramparts of Red Fort. Today morning, that even a child is expected to be independent at when he or she is in the 20s. And we are nearly 75, as he said. So let's take that to heart. Uh, because we uh, have done so much for the rich and the middle class, but we need to do something more for the bottom of the pyramid at speed and scale. We're still way behind on all the deliverables of the MG, MDG, the Millennium Development Goals. We simply need to scale with speed the social development for the underprivileged. That's the cr crux and the simple message that we should take out of this whole long day as to let's stop talking and start doing is the, is the key for us. We had done uh, at Nudge Foundation, we had done Charcha 2020 in May, which was a 24, uh, and this is now a 24 hour global event, which was the nat natural step. In Charcha, we had the largest convening of the social sector with 580 speakers, uh, 20,000 live attendees, and over 300,000 total unique views for that one. I'm pleased to announce that in this 24 hours, it's actually 23 hours right now. Uh, the Nudge Forum, we've had 91 speakers and we had more than 300K viewers from across 50 countries and still counting. That's a wow, is all I can say. So thank you everybody for, uh, you know, for this uh, in, uh, tremendous response. Today's sessions, we've had uh, the best of minds, starting with Abhijit Banerjee, our uh, latest Nobel laureate, we had Arvind Panagriya, Dr. Swami, Swami, Swami Nathan, Don Gibbs, Rajiv Shah, Amitabh Kant, our dynamic CEO of Niti Aayog. We had Vani Kola, Mrs. Rajshree Birla herself came on, a global philanthropists like Vinod Khosla and Desh Desh Pandey, civil society leaders like Madhav Chavan and Kennedy Odibe, medical folks like Dr. Indu Boshan, uh, Dr. Devi Shetty, education experts who wrote the current policy, Dr. Kasturi Rangan was there, Ashish Dhawan, and our very own uh, principal scientific advisor, Dr. Vijay Raghavan was there, moderated by Nivruti Rai, speaking on each of the elements of social development and upliftment, as it's about orchestrating all these elements rather than individual elements. That's the key in this one. Each one is not enough, each one is necessary, but the sufficiency comes if we get most of them right at the same time. And, that's, and we need to get them to the most needy. And I can't thank Ricky Cage and Mary Milliben for their inspiring anthems giving the 74th Independence Day celebrations a big boost. Thank you. A few of the takeaways that I have uh, from this 24 hours is we should stop working in silos. Just simply stop working in silos is the key message. And things like the, you know, convening like the Nudge Forum is a good step in that right direction. Government, corporates, and civil societies, NGOs, need to be aligned and work together. One of the benefits that COVID, about the only benefit I can think 
that COVID has had that it has forced all the various stakeholders to work together. My point is, why do we need a crisis to make work together? When the crisis is over, let's continue working together. Why, why do we need a crisis? And there are models that work well for the upliftment. So let's use and build on the best models from around the world, be they be from Bangladesh, be they from Peru, or as uh, Amit, our Consul General, will tell us, be they from, from Brazil. Wherever they are, let's use the best out there and share what we do best. There is a need to, for institution building and investment in scientific and technological advancement. Technology needs to be at the heart of this, and it needs to be appropriate technology, not just technology for the sake of technology. The work, and one of the big, big outcomes, and one of the big things that I heard today was that the outcome needs to be measured carefully with data. So it should be data-driven rather than guesswork. And if we can do that, we can realign our resources in the best and most appropriate way. Civil society needs to be a strong collective, as it's too fragmented now. And one of the best words I heard my good friend Ingrid tell was, it's either coexistence or no existence, which is very, very appropriate. And the digital divide is the new divide, aggravating the economic divide. So we have to work towards all this. I'm really pleased that the Nudge Foundation in partnership with the Rockefeller Foundation and Skoll Foundation was able to create the Nudge Forum as a global platform for civil society working together to help us get our voices together, to do our bit for the unprecedented, unprecedented pandemic and the havoc it's caused to the underprivileged and possibly set us back by years. We just have to work harder together to come back to where we were and scale up quickly. So, so that was a, a summary. And uh, now uh, let's come to the most interesting part of the closing session, a session that connects two opposite parts of the world, Brazil and India. It's a fitting end to a 24-hour event that started with the USA and India, now the Southern Hemisphere and Brazil and India. It's a very appropriate ending. It's my privilege to introduce uh, our next and last speaker of the 24-hour event, Mr. Amit Kumar Mishra, who's our Consul General in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Mr. Mishra is a career diplomat belonging to the IFS. He's worked at Consul General in, uh, in Perth before he took charge as Consul General in Sao Paulo in 2019. In a career spanning uh, one and a half decades, he served in Indian diplomatic missions in Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, and Australia. He has dealt with political, commercial, education, cultural, and diaspora issues. He has also worked in the Ministry of External Affairs. Mr. Has, Mr. Mishra has done his undergraduate, his postgraduate in history, in botany, I'm so sorry. He knows Hindi, English, and Arabic. He's married to Mrs. Meenakshi, and they have one daughter who's there with them. So just before I start, Amit, welcome on board, first of all. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. So before I start, let me give a, uh, a quick uh, uh, thing about my personal involvement with Brazil. Uh, uh, we were privileged uh, two years ago that we welcomed uh, a Brazilian daughter-in-law into our family with a wedding in Portugal. And I'm pleased to say that our, uh, my Samdhis, my in-laws actually live in Sao Paulo, though we've never been there. And uh, so it's, it's, it's very, very appropriate that uh, we have you sitting there and me sitting here. I should, I should have been actually sitting in Sao Paulo also <laughs> with you. So, uh, and uh, just now, uh, our in-laws, uh, their name is uh, Dora and Theo Barbero. And they live in Sao Paulo. And Dora celebrated her 70th birthday just last week. And guess what? In a Zoom call lasting five hours. I, don't, I think that's a record we need to beat. <laughs> and uh, one more thing which I would say before we get into the uh, meat of the whole discussion is that when we celebrated the wedding in Portugal, we had 100 people from Sao Paulo and we had 100 people from our USA and India. And we practiced our Bhangra and our Indian dances, everything. And guess what? Our Brazilian, new Brazilian family beat the pants of us in Bhangra. So we have you there, Amit, so we need to do something together about this. <laughs> so, so let's get into uh, the discussion that we are going to have. 
So I know that uh, uh, of my, I have shown you my unashamed bias for Brazil, but would love you to comment on the similarities that you find between the people of India and Brazil. And certainly touch on the, because I can certainly vouch for the family values that both have. So we'd love to have you start on that and then we'll get down to other issues. So how do you, you're there, you see, you've seen the people at so cl such close quarters. Well, thanks, Arun, and uh, thanks again to the Nudge Forum for this opportunity to uh, represent here Brazil and bring the perspective from Brazil and uh, Latin America and contribute to the debate. Well, first thing is that, you know, we should not presume, like you mentioned, you know, we presume we are good at Bhangra, but being defeated here, there are people who can learn quickly and beat us at that. So, so as you mentioned that, you know, learning from uh, knowing about what, uh, what exists in other parts of the world, and probably if we can replicate that those models, successful models to resolve our own problems, that would be the first thing. Now coming here, I would, uh, you know, I would admit that in first year of my uh, uh, posting here and assignment, it has been a learning experience, both in terms of the scale of economy and what Brazil has achieved as a country. Uh, you know, a sense of admiration with, you know, it's, it, it, it has a substantial population, but still maybe one fifth or one sixth of India's population, but the scale of economy is almost $2 trillion for a 200 million uh, base population. So that there are lessons there, uh, there for us also. They have significantly transformed their agricultural uh, economy. And when you read about it, then you realize that just 15 years back, Brazil was a net importer of uh, uh, food and the agricultural sector was not uh, in right shape. But today is the second largest uh, food exporter by volume and the sector is literally driving the economy during the COVID. And you know that the agricultural sector has been our key challenge in economy as well as the number of people that the sector simply employs. And uh, besides that, I, if you look at you know, a city like Sao Paulo and a city like Mumbai, the challenges are literally similar. You, know, uh, you have uh, uh, an, an elite area, but the, on the streets, uh, transportation, poverty, sanitation, all these challenges are literally similar. I find uh, you know the any solution that would work for an Indian city should ideally work for a uh, Brazilian city and vice versa. And uh, personally, I feel that there is a lot of uh, um, for the you know in terms of in sync with what we are doing in terms of focus in India, we have uh, a lot of possibility of startups co cooperating between the two two sides. Uh, in India, you know, startup program has been uh, startup India program has been hugely successful. We can proud, proudly claim to have the third largest ecosystem in the world, second in terms of tech startups. Similarly, Sao Paulo also. Before coming here, I didn't realize Sao Paulo is home to uh, 12 unicorns. So now that's a big achievement for a city. And ideally, uh, these are they are in different sectors than what our com our com uh, companies are. And I would give you two quick examples of how Indian companies have come here and quickly succeeded. Uh, Oyo entered uh, this market after I came to Sao Paulo. And today Oyo is already third or fourth largest hotel chain in Brazil. Just a matter oh. of eight months. So, you know, that just for me is an eye opener of the possibility. UPL came to this market through acquisition almost a decade back. UPL Brazil today is bigger than UPL operation in India or uh, US or any other market. Uh, Sterlite came into this market and Sterlite has been in energy transmission. They have won 70% of bids they have participated. Adit Bidla has made acquisitions and is doing really well. So here Indian companies have been hugely successful. And in the process, I would say that creating a name for Indian uh, community and the brand of business here. So the commercial possibilities are there, but as with the focus of what the forum, the forum's focus on socioeconomic challenges, that's also a part where, you know, even how the governments have responded to COVID, there's such a strong similarity. In India, government has, is providing free, um, uh, free ration to uh, almost 800 million people. There, are ca there is cash support to families, there's cash support to farmers. Similar thing is happening in Brazil. And guess what? I would, you know, it's a matter of satisfaction that our matter of the, our mechanism of delivery is more efficient and more prompt than what I have seen in, here in Brazilian counterparts. And there is interest in Brazilian system and learning about it. Uh, what our direct benefit transfer has been able to 
achieve and of obviously they are taken up by the scale scale of it so uh, you know as indian representative here we i see lot of similarities and more than similarities i would say lots of possibilities so our focus here is to just uh, enrich our own knowledge pass it on down to the system to the people who understand it uh, look at what uh, uh, complementarities we can find and then move from there thank you very much amit for that but uh, since we are talking in terms of uh, the social angle which is where we need to find partnership i understand that uh, the the universal basic income has been implemented in uh, brazil but yes uh, or, or some form in form some form yeah, because that yeah and are there any learnings for our country because i'm sure uh, our government is looking at all the models in order to help our own people no definitely if you speak to uh, a common brazilian and it doesn't matter which uh, segment of society he belongs to the the program uh, bolsa familia where a cash handout was given to the family and then there are uh, uh, similar supporting mechanisms where if you know the, ch the child should not work the child is going to school and everything there are conditions attached to that but that program is credited to uh, you know bring almost 70 million people out of poverty for in this country so that's uh, that's no mean achievement for a society you know and obviously in india also we are at a very starting stages it has been implemented uh, uh, in uh, farming sector where we are providing a nominal support to our uh, uh, farmers through pradhan mantri kisan yojana uh, kisan samman yojana i'm sure that there are lessons to learn and it's not that we are not uh, uh, this conversation is not happening i had the uh, um, and a pleasure to meet uh, mr suplicy who is based in sao paulo only who started this idea of universal basic income and is a very strong proponent of its implementation across countries it, it doesn't matter in uh, i had a discussion with him in, in developed undeveloped developing doesn't matter you know he is a firm believer on that and civil society basis he was in india in hyderabad in last october so the, this these conversations are happening and i believe niti ayog uh, representatives participated in that conference it's just that uh, you know these things take time to percolate in system and in india if anything we implement just because of the sheer number of uh, our people or beneficiaries the financial burden on governments will is going to be very high so they will definitely they are looking at the best practices across the world and they will adapt what uh, you know goes well for the indian system and what we can afford that's obviously a right what wonderful tell me what is the size of the indian diaspora in uh, let's say in brazil and then all of south america because i think there are also lots of in in argentina and all over, all over well i'm sorry i won't be able to comment on the overall size in latin america but i do understand it's it's less you know i am coming from australia where perth only had 100000 indian origin people but you won't find 100000 in whole of latin america but okay. brazil uh, it's a small population maybe 5 to 7000 you know uh, more on 5000 side if you say but what uh, what has been a revelation for me is that the impact what that this small community brings in terms of relationship and also impact of that community in brazil that has been quite humongous i have come across where institutions have been set up literally and i mean literally by indians you have uh, you, you take brazilian space program Uh, there is an indian scientist uh, mr savant who has uh, you know uh, set up a unique uh, you know array of telescopes that looks at solar flares and that data is valued across across the world in the space research community you have a gentleman based in rio mr hamja who has is a geologist he has discovered a river below amazon it's named after him hamja river wow. you have another gentleman who works on the material science and radiology similarly these people have helped created institutions something i would say is a counterpart of what we have under the drdo framework certain institutions where we can credit individuals with and similar impact i would say unlike many other countries here it and pharma we have very strong presence our top 5 6 companies of it are present here doing good business similarly on pharma uh, more than 2 dozen companies would be present here but what is uh, you know one one should uh, understand is that being here is requires a lot of commitment so the people who have uh, are heading these institutions here these private companies they are set up here and operations here 
they have to commit to the language and commit to the culture and they require a long term presence here all of them some of them have been around for now two decades so you can say that their company's journey has started with them and they is continuing with them it's not about a large, you know large turnover as you see it in other parts of world for these companies so i personally would like to credit these people with for their perseverance and brazil requires if you want to succeed in business it requires a lot of patience here it's not it's not easy but these people have persisted it's with their family you can say the same about india when foreigners come to india they also require a lot of patience i can I, i can tell you with the experience and my brazilian friends agree it beats india with a margin a huge margin <laughs> Okay, so, so at least uh, at least we are better better than Bangla on that. <laughs> and th- and third part, which I want to quickly highlight, the individual efforts. Again, you have here as part of Carnival, Carnival, a huge festival called Block of Bollywood. Yeah. So it's good to see to see thousands of people and say more Brazilians than Indians. Okay. <laughs> Dancing to maybe they are doing their Bangla practice there, and you know that's why they have taken you by surprise. But tell me what what I mean. Like I'll take you up on the startup side because that's an area that I personally work in. In addition to, of course, the social sector, and we'd love to find ways to collaborate between our NGOs. I mean, because normally you talk of business, but uh, have we ever thought of collaborating between our NGOs? At Nudge, we'd love to see whether there's something we could do and learn. We, you know, we definitely would facilitate any kind of connection. You know, one one thing I would say that. the this is a relationship where governments have taken the lead lead i have come there are other way around places around in australia i often felt as consul general that uh, the people to people ties were ahead and the government was following up following it here governments have uh, you know taken the lead you have seen a very huge successful visit of brazilian president to india early in january but the other part of relationship if you look at bilateral trade i would forego the investment part that way indian companies presence is doing well but bilateral trade is lag- lagging behind now people to people contacts are there but as you mentioned there are m- many more stakeholders in any relationship ngos civil societies uh, uh, people who uh, are in academia and other things and those relationships and bonds when created they don't need uh, to be you know nurtured on a regular basis there are people on both side both sides who if uh, find common ground they continue that conversation and engagement independent of governments so what we would want to do is we would want to definitely facilitate this connection i am more than happy to carry on this conversation with you and yeah. help this help it connect because the challenges that we have by the sheer scale of the you know numbers it's not possible for any government as prime minister mentioned it's for each individual to contribute each individual and it's i would say rather if for each indian at this end also and in the, and in, in india also uh, uh, i lo- i would look forward to your visit here to sao paulo no no we uh, had actually planned to be there in november but uh, you know sadly the pandemic came in the way no we, we uh, let's hope pandemic so in for came with 2020 and i am i'm praying it goes with 2020 2021 early so culture planet trip here we will connect we will help you connect with the people who understand that ngo and civil society ecosystem also better that would also be a learning experience for us also i think i would admit that as consulate we have not engaged or touched on those uh, you know uh, those parts of a relationship we are also caught up with uh, what in- involves in terms of government science and technology commerce people to people culture so civil society part we have not touched yet we would be happy to facilitate if that makes sense even on the medical side even because today a lot of discussion was around health delivery and i sit on the board of Dr. of narayan health which is one of the leading uh, hospital which works on affordable health care we i mean we actually have a hospital in cayman islands and we'd love to explore i mean you know i don't know whether this is the right the timing is not right but uh, there's a lot of exchange on the medical uh, technology and uh, processes which we can facilitate rather than just pharma sure sure you know uh, one thing that i have learned after coming to brazil is that brazil is home to uh, probably among the best public funded health systems wow it's uh, it's it's outreach is outstanding you have to see the local units to believe it you know but they they are challenged by the scale of geography 
but they have not let it affect the quality of the service. That's something really, really admirable that you have seen here. And maybe, uh, maybe that's something you could help to facilitate with, uh, you know, Ministry of Health and uh, Indu Bhushan of Ayushman Bharat. Maybe sure, that's sure. Uh, we, we, uh, in that field, I would say we would have a learning experience from what they have been able to achieve. That's just a, a, just a commitment that serious uh, amount of spending that government does and to maintain this quality. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, opening up to uh, stakeholders from outside, hospitals and others, uh, that's where in general I felt that Brazil uh, you know, has a long history of being a closed economy and uh, the sectoral uh, part, uh, you know, uh, sectoral associations are the one which rule the rules, you know, in, in helping the rule, uh, setting of the rules with governments and the individual players also. Sure. And they are a bit slow to open up, but that said, if you engage them, they are happy to, and they're happy to engage and explore options. And thankfully, we are, this year we have seen a lot of interest in uh, engaging India, which has been strengthened after COVID. And, you know, the Brazilians have seen how uh, COVID has, uh, you know, um, ensured one thing, the one, one takeaway for everyone is that you have to diversify. Diversify your engagement in terms of countries, companies, sectors, you know, and that you have to do it beyond continent. Otherwise, for Brazil, the Europe and the uh, North America has always taken priority. They were sl sl slowly opening up to China, but you, uh, at this moment, you have seen a lot of interest with wonderful, wonderful. with India also. You know, uh, um, I, we didn't have uh, you know uh, governors' offices reaching out to consulates on their own. So um, that's one one big change I'm seeing, and I'm sure that it will help us also because there's equal desire from the government systems on both sides to facilitate. We we just have to put the right people in the room and leave them for. They will find in the conversations they will find a common ground and find productive and endeavors to indulge in. Perfect, Amit. It's been really wonderful. So thank you so much uh, for the time you've taken. I know it's only midday there, and it's uh, getting to be midnight here. It's a very long 24 hours for our team. So thank you. I really thank you. And we'll continue this conversation beyond this uh, talk on so many other issues. I'll make sure of that. So thank, thank you. Sure. Thank you, Arun. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, Pooja and Namath for giving the opportunity. And uh, it's really good to be part of it and represent here Latin America. And you know, I bring the continent to the forum. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm just now going to just uh, say a little thanks to everybody uh, who's all our speakers. As I told you, we had more than uh, 90 speakers today across many countries, many time zones. I want to thank our partners, Rockefeller and Skoll Foundations, who've taken so much time and including the CEOs participated in this. And of course, I'd like to thank our dedicated and enthusiastic nudge team. There's just too many people to thank at this point. And uh, led by our uh, dynamic CEO, Atul Sutija, and who's worked tirelessly to make this event a grand success. I think it's been a great effort. And I can promise on behalf of the nudge board uh, that we will be making all the efforts to build on uh, all the ideas that have been given uh, to us, including creating a whole convening platform which could help the sector to come together and work as one and with civil society and that's the main issue has been to our main issue will be how do we give de benefits to the lowest strata of our society who deserve it with the least amount of friction that's going to be our effort to work at scale and to deliver on the promise of this whole 24 hours today so good night and jai hind Thanks a lot, Arun sir, and thanks a lot, Consul General Amit Kumar Mishra, for joining us today. Uh, and thanks a lot, Arun sir, for also summarizing the day today.